what upsets me the most is I can't even blame this thing's existence on science. Its creation was an actual accident. Behold, the humble foam dart. And this abomination. This plastic, 3D printed, sin against God. Why? Why? Yeah, I have a new favorite pistol. And it absolutely terrifies me on multiple levels. And we'll talk about that. But what the heck even is it? Well, it may look familiar if you have any experience with the Zinc 2.0 by Auto Sidearm of 118 Designs. This is a modification of that blaster called the Zinc. Multiple eyes because it's a Zinc with stuff added to it. And this was done by Misplaced Moose, and I will have a link to their shop down in the description below where you can pick up either hardware kits and download the files to print one out yourself, or buy a completed, hand-tested, fitted, ready-to-go blaster. <sighs> this is, there's nothing even remotely like it. I'm sure I've had pistols, uh, quotation mark, and some of them have been ridiculously powerful. This is on a whole nother level because there's nothing in this size, shape, configuration in the entirety of foam flinging that has the performance this thing does. This is a sniper's weapon. You can use this as a primary. In fact, the numbers of velocity that this thing puts out puts most of my blasters to shame. That's, that's no joke. This is just absurd. It's excessive, it is amazingly fun, and it's also scary because you, you see the, the big spring in there, the cutouts in the slide that expose the internals? That's required for the blaster to operate because this is a K25 spring, a hefty spring. Well, it needs room to kind of compress and the slide had to have these cutouts so it would have room to do that because the spring is too big for the blaster. You've got a mag release button, it's only on the left hand side, and in this one comes with a detachable 13 round magazine. This is an extended mag, holds 13 cut down nerf darts or half darts. I usually save myself the trouble and just buy the Adventure Force ones from Walmart. And it is a springer, which means it has to be primed every single time. Now, this thing on top is supposed to be a sight, but this was actually added on by Moose because I touched his personal zinc when I was in Texas at Jared's Epic Blaster Battle Holiday Edition in December, and I couldn't prime his zinc. Uh, he handed it to me and I thought it was broken or jammed, and no, that it just requires a ridiculous amount of strength to prime. This is no joke. This thing is scary because this is just 3D printed plastic and the amount of force required to prime it back. I am terrified that one day I'm going to eat this plunger tube and spring and everything to the face because it's just gonna blow apart. But I have talked to Moose and he says that's pretty much not possible, so don't worry about it. So I just want to point out that while this thing is ridiculously hard to prime, if you've used any kind of older modifications, just putting big old stinky springs inside of blasters that clearly weren't meant to have them, you'll feel right at home with this monster. But it legitimately, it's going to be really hard to see. That's, that's some wear on my finger from just a little bit of use on this thing. I wouldn't want to run like a hundred something darts through this in a row without stopping. It would not be pleasant, but it is ridiculously fun. But what's more terrifying is that yes, this blaster is an accident. Misplaced Moose was just thinking he could add more plunger tube and stuff to get a little bit more power out of the Zinc. If you used anything like the Zinc or the Gecko or the Fire Rat or any of the other blasters that are in this kind of configuration, they hit pretty good, but they aren't like replacing your primary worthy. So he added a longer plunger tube and a spring and made room for it and uh, managed to completely subvert my knowledge of everything Springer. All right, so a little bit of a cop out. When I first got this thing and chronographed it, I was hitting 240 to 260. And I have fired literally hundreds of darts since then. I even shot that opening pretty much as soon as I got the blaster. I can't chronograph stuff anymore, apparently, because it the, the other chronograph just blanks out, doesn't want to work. So here's the old chronograph. Notice how it's still recoiled forward, but 227, 217, 205, 221, 
230. That's a little bit more like it, but I haven't seen anything above like 238 on this chronograph. That's all in feet per second. So that's still ridiculously strong. There we go, 240. But I might have broken in this blaster too much. I mean, there's a there's a lot of uh, gunk in there now. It's uh, it's pretty gross. And and that 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 how this thing like the snap I guess I don't know what you call it that keeps resetting the other chronograph. So I gave up. There's chronograph numbers. And just a quick comparison to the Dart Zone Pro Mark 2.1. 146, 143, 149. I mean, yeah, this hits about 160. So ah, for the same size, it's actually shorter if you take off. Because normally with a springer, like the Harrier that I just reviewed, you wanna have a powerful spring with a big plunger tube and an immaculate air seal behind that dart. And it's just beautiful. This does none of that. Obviously the spring is up here. The entire plunger system is at the top of the blaster. The barrel is actually down here. In fact, it fires from the bottom right there. When you prime this thing back, well, obviously now you've caught the spring. Uh, you press the trigger to release that caught spring, which at the end of it has a plunger head, which seals against the plunger tube, goes through this piece and is redirected. Now you can see those O-rings right there and the magazine obviously has darts in it. When I pulled this piece back, the magazine indexes a dart upwards. When I push this forward, that is pushing a dart out of the magazine into that lower barrel and seals behind it. So now the only way that whole airflow can go is out the front with the dart. The terrifying thing is that this has a not so great air seal and not a very long barrel for it to use that air pressure. And it's obviously going through this turnaround piece. So it's losing some efficiency there. It doesn't care. In fact, Misplaced Moose described this thing to me as working like the cork in a champagne bottle. That the barrel is actually tighter than what you get with a normal Nerf barrel, even a high performance blaster. And what's more is, yes, this thing has a scar barrel, the bearing scar barrel at the front of it built into the blaster. And it is dumb accurate. Now, of course, shooting out of the lower barrel takes some time to get used to because this thing's essentially the Nerf version of the Lago Alien. This is just a tack driver. And you know what's more terrifying? It has slam fire, which means if you hold down the trigger, you prime the blaster back, when you push it forward, it will immediately fire the dart, skipping a step of pulling the trigger, a half A press if you would. And of course you can continuously rack it to shoot darts. And even better, it has a magazine stop. So you don't dry fire the thing. I, I, what else do you want from me? Magazine fed, high velocity, super accurate, compact, svelte, with slam fire. Yeah, and the, uh, the 1.2, even if I remove the muzzle brake on here, it is substantially bigger. Uh, I mean, they're about the same length with the muzzle removed, but the 1.2 is thicker, and I don't think there are extended mags for the 1.2, while of course the Zinc uses a 13 round mag as opposed to a six round mag, and uh, hits uh, sometimes up to 100 FPS harder. So, yeah. This replaces virtually every primary I could ever want. And the funniest part about it is that I realize this thing hits way too hard for virtually any Nerf War I would ever go to. There's not a Nerf War anywhere around me that would let me use something that hits this hard. And I don't even care because I love it. I, I love this thing. Now there are pistols like this in the hobby, but like I said, none of them are like this. None of them can hit the performance marks this thing does in this size of a blaster. The grip is perfect on this. It even does the thing where it's kind of fat in the middle and then trails off towards the bottom. So it grabs the meat of your hand and yet the top of it, look at how that is slim. Oh my goodness. It's so perfect because you can rest your finger on there and you can rest your thumb on the other side. It is immaculate, especially with the little finger grooves, right? So good. The mag release is perfect. Might be somewhat of an issue if you're left-handed. Oh, just kidding, you just use your index finger. I love 
this blaster. But I'm sure you noticed this thing uses a proprietary magazine. It is not compatible with anything else, which is funny because Misplaced Moose has made it his mission to make other blasters use this magazine. So he has more of a reason to use this with other things. I am just astounded how something this good could be made by accident, which shows that this hobby is nowhere close to being solved. I was worried that we pretty much hit the apex. We weren't gonna see anything new or surprising, and then this comes, and it completely changes the game for everything. And that's one of the reasons why I wanna do this video, so more people can see what is capable when you do things a little bit differently. And I cannot, Thank Misplaced Moose enough for sending me this blaster. I didn't pay for it. And to be honest, I didn't know if I was gonna like it because I barely used the one in Texas and all I remembered was it was virtually impossible to prime. But once I got my hands on it, I, I pretty much didn't stop. Misplaced Moose doesn't have the best print quality ever. It's like a six out of 10. It's functional enough and it looks pretty good in most places, but mine had some obvious under extrusions and some minor herring issues in places. This thing is just amazing. I would use this over any pump action springer any day of the week in the similar performance. And that is to say, you knew this was coming. Of course you did. Magazine fed, slam fire. This thing would work perfectly. You can see the distance right here between the prime and then the rail and stuff. Yeah, this needs a pump grip. I, I know that's stupid and I don't even think it's possible because the amount of strength required with no flexing and no issue, it's a tall order. But this thing with a pump grip and slam fire with nothing else. I know people want stocks, but just this little, it would be just incredible. And I'm excited to see where the future goes from here. This is a game changer, and it's going to take a while for people to catch up, but this is awesome.